Hello, my name is Andy Zen and I am power plant and fuel system expert at IASA. During the presentation, I will introduce IASA view concerning the fire protection in a designated fire zone for an EVTOL. For that, I want first to remember you that the current regulation defines as definite fire zone an engine, an APU, and a combustion heater. For new technology, as electrical and hybrid propulsion, new de designated fire zone has to be defined. For that, we consider the electrical motor and the batteries. The structure of the presentation will focus on the fire by making the comparison of a conventional fire and an versus an electrical fire. Through this slide, I will uh, first introduce uh, the two mitigation principles used for fire protection. The first one is the prevention. It is to reduce the probability of occurrence, and for that we use segregation, firewall, and fireproofness and fire resistance of the material and equipment. The second uh, principle is the protection that are there for, to reduce the consequence of the occurrence. And for that, we use detectors as well as uh, extinguishing agent. In relation with the previous slide, the current threat are already covered by the current regulation under CS 23, 25, 27, and 29 under support E. And they are covering the thermal engine the cooling system, the fuel, and the hydraulics. But for the new technology, electrical engine, they have to be redefined and assessed for the electrical motor, if it's a propulsion unit, and for the battery, if it's used for propulsion unit. Those are the new threat to define. Since a century, the power plant makes cohabitate the following equipment. Thermal engine, hydraulics, fuel tanks, as well as cooling system. For the new technology, we will have to make cohabitate electrical motor and battery. And we will need, in conclusion, to mix all those technology together. So the way that have been chosen by IASA to the to develop the AMC and the variety, variety of possibility or threat is a step-by-step -step approach. The first step will cover a full electrical propulsion. The second step will cover electrical propulsion but with liquid coolant for the engine or for the battery. And the step three will cover the new technology as fuel cell and capacitor and hybrid technology. Let me introduce the st step one and consideration taken. On a current airliner, we have today battery for service for a maximum of one kilowatt. And they are covered in the, under DO311 standard. But it is not sufficient to cover the two-day battery offer for propulsion that are from, from 10 to 100 kilowatt. We will see a scale effect appearing with more thermal inertia, more voltage and amps. We will see for the engine more inertia too, and the combustible mass will increase drastically. So we consider today uh, as low risk the battery for service in comparison for the battery for propulsion. We can see also that new threats are appearing like sparks, smokes, corrosive gases, soot, fragments, and hot particles. So we will see in the next slide some new consideration to be taken concerning the fire. Through this slide, I will introduce the fire protection notion for a fuel system. CS definition, quote two notion. The first one is the fire resistance. Fire resistance is the exposition of, the mat of a material to a calibrated 
flame for five minutes. It is considered as a maximum reaction time. And it is incompressible. It is there to identify, confirm, take the action, and initiate the fire procedure. Then the fireproofness is mentioned in the CS definition. And it is an extension up to 15 minutes of a calibrated flame. This is there to guarantee the extinguishing of, of the system. The electrical technology will have to redefine the flame characteristic as well as the time duration. Taking our experience gain in the conventional fuel fire, we have modelized the threat for an electrical motor as follows. What is new in an electrical fire, especially for battery, is the explosion of the cells. The reaction time will be unchanged, so five minutes will still need to be considered, but new calibration flame has to be defined. Concerning the total time of the threat to be withstand, we will have to continue the fire up to the ground. That means that we will take the max altitude of operation of the vehicle up to the safe landing and evacuation. So for the characterization of the paved flame, we will need to have the material, the chemistry, and we will have to know the temperature and the heat flux of those two components. But we will have also to consider the influence of the design and the dimension. So we can uh, keep uh, probably the similar approach, but uh, there is a necessity to define new wording. In the current definition, we have the fireproofness that is not anymore for battery and electrical population possible to be used. But on another hand, we can still continue to use the fire resistant if we adapt the text. So we arrive then to the requirement of the VTOL 2330 and the means of compliance. As we see before, we will need to update the CS definition for the fire resistance. And for the fire withstanding, we will have to consider a new flame as well as an explosion. Means of compliance 2330 will have to consider an explosive containment wall and withstanding wall for prevention. And it will have also to consider drainage, ventilation, and disconnection mechanism for protection. In the next slide, I will introduce the new definition. So here are the new definition that I will let you read and digest. The first definition is the fire withstanding, and the second definition is the fire withstanding zone. Here is a second set of definition that have to be read and digest. The first one is the explosive fire containment definition, and the second one is the definition of the explosive fire containment zone. Concerning the status of the MOC 2330, a release is expected for the end of the year 2020. Yes, I will need the support of the industry for the characterization of the flame. Currently, there is a Neurokai group that is trying to determine the fire characteristic. In conclusion, I will say that due to the variability of the concept of the EVTOL, as well as the variability of the electrical motors, as well as the variability of the battery, an EPMOC one fit for all cannot be proposed. Now it's time for me to thank you for your attention and please uh, feel free to ask your question on our platform. <laughs>